my resistances. Okay, 494 and 309. Hmm. 494 and 309. Well, I had this one. I had this one. And I could give myself another 16%, and that would just be better all around protection. So. 70. 77? Really? It's not 490 anymore. Uh, 496. The defense is more, though, overall. It's 351. But the resistances have dropped by almost 30. Because my physical resistance went up 5%. Uh, it was just a 5% increase, and it looks like the protection of 42 made this armor a lot better. That's why amulets are good, see? Um, magic resistance plus 5% endurance and and this one is physical resistance I can only get one of these back though if I put both of them in this armor that's something to consider and then there's this physical resistance 58 which is interesting um, 58 or percentages uh, I might want to go percentages I don't get my attack bonus if I do that though uh, but uh, I would like my attack bonus for sure. Um, increase all damage types, which also increases my heavenly magic. Let's see, um, ten thousand to make this armor. You better kick ass. And now it's one sixty-six, and its level is nineteen instead of what eight or six. That's what amulets do. And that's why augment slots for your armor is awesome. Are awesome. So it looks like my resistances are above 490, and my defense. My defense took a hit from 309 to 270, but my resistances have gone up. So. Alright. Uh, percent, percent to all resistances. That's for attack and defense 10%. So I kind of want to keep that on. And. Well, that's just a bunch of attack and a bunch of defense. And this is just a bunch of protection. Alright, well, we're good. And it looks like I can go back and do a little bit more grinding. Grindy grind. Alright, I could probably grind around here, which would be stronger than around here. Um, probably. And the loot drops would be better as well. I just used a mentor potion. I didn't want to. Oh well. I'm gonna grind here now. Of concentration. There we go. Feed me. Feed me. Feed me, Seymour. I say feed me because I need my health back, and the only way I'm gonna get that is by attacking you. That's why I like attack speed up with this build. It all makes sense. It all comes together. You Percent to attack for more damage. Protect uh, attacks. Um, attack speed for more deep, more attacks per second. <coughs> Which will translate into. Oops. There we go. Um, I'll just pick up that loot, and you need to stop running away from me because it annoys the shit out of me. Okay, I killed you. Um, let's kill this leader. There we go. Was he even a leader? I don't think he was. Just kill some orcs for fun. You know I kick people in the head like you. For fun. Right. For breakfast. How do you kick oh, shut up? Trying to be funny. Yeah. Say what you will about Adam Sandler and it's all true. But there was a time and when he was considered to be funny. I know, it's hard to believe. It really is. I mean come on, grown ups and grown ups too. This a string. A string of shit coming out of his freaking acting career. And like, for every Happy Gilmore he made, and he's made about seven just um, grown-ups, you know. I, I want to say that the Bed Bath and Beyond movie he made wasn't too bad. Okay, because I actually thought that was decently enjoyable, even though it was predictable. As a matter of fact, I really wish that he had died at the end of that. Not because I hate the guy and want his career, you know, want his career to go down the toilet. 
I mean I would have been stronger. Don't talk to that fucker. I mean it would have been stronger for the movie that he learned his lesson at the end. And, you know, um, that just would have made the movie stronger. That we don't get a second chance in life, but we can pass on what we've learned, and so others don't make the same mistake, which you did, the next family world. first, you know, right at the end. I can't remember what movie that was. Uh, it just, it would have been better if he had died. And Angel of Death, Christopher Walken, I love Christopher Walken, he just gives his performance. I just love his performance in the I love the guy. You know, and he's done some weird stuff, too. He's done the Darkening, you know, Privateer 2. It wasn't even called Wing Commander Privateer 2. You can tell at the time they were just cashing out on, on Privateer's name. But if they were going to cash out on that, they should have called it Wing Commander, because that was more noticeable. Privateer was a spin-off game, which, by the way, guys, I own. You know, I own all the Wing Commanders. It's just the Wing Commander games are the kind of games you will set yourself up to play. You put the maps on your wall, you look at them while you play, you get into it. It's, uh, okay, there we go, there's the W. I have to make sure I use these mentor potions, otherwise there's no point in me doing all this. Yeah, uh, my friend did that for a while. He, um, the same friend who's at up your ass and around the corner, he actually, when he was playing Wing Commander, when it was new, he had the Wing Commander Galaxy map posted above his bed, and he'd look at it. I don't know if he used it during play, but it was a pretty big poster, and it was fun to see that, and I actually was kind of envious because I was, my father, while he had a computer, there was no family computer, it was his computer, and he never really upgraded his shit. He, he, he had an Atari 800 XL computer system, which worked for a long time for him. And I, I, I could play games on it. But then, when we moved, we didn't have it anymore. And then he got this, this, um, uh, Pentium 100. At first it was a Pentium, it was a Pentium 99, because that's the speed it said it ran at. And then there was a turbo button on. Do you guys remember that turbo button was actually a thing? You overclock your, you overclock your uh, CPU with a turbo button in the front, and it made it go to 199. Basically 100 to 200. So he didn't have a Pentium 200, but he had a, he had a Pentium 100 that he could hit the turbo button on and make it a 200. It's, um, that's what he had in the garage. And he had a flat keyboard that slid under his desk. Yes, flat. Um, and I think he made it himself, actually. Which is pretty interesting. Uh, he did a lot of stuff himself. And he had, he had, that was in the, uh, in the garage, and he had one in the office. Um, that one had Windows 98 on it. Uh, and it had a 700 meg hard drive. And yeah, 700 megs. And Windows 98 took about 250 megs to install. So he didn't have a lot of space left to run that computer when he was done, all things considered. And plus, he didn't have a sound card for a while. And then he had a sound card that I had to get working. And did you know that um, CD ROMs back in the day had IDE cables? And the IDE cable actually plugged into your sound card. You could plug it into your motherboard if you wanted to. But in order to get any kind of sound out of it, if you were going to play a computer game that was on a CD-ROM, the IDE cable plugged into the sound card. Uh, yeah, because there was no inbuilt. You know how today computers, motherboards have built-in sound cards. They're not 3D sound cards, but they're built-in sound cards. Well, back then they didn't have built-in sound cards at all. And in order to get sound out of it, other than the computer speaker, which was really annoying, beeps, then what you did was um, you had to get sound card. And he had one, and the IDE cable from the CD-ROM plugged into the sound card. And that was the only way to get the sound out of the CD-ROM games. The only way. You couldn't plug it into the motherboard and expect to sound hard. It, it was hard to get working because back in those days, also the IDE cables didn't have a notch in them to tell you which direction to plug it in. And if you plugged it in backwards, it wouldn't work. Yeah, you could literally plug them in backwards. It wouldn't make them blow up or anything, but you wouldn't know what direction. You just had to be trial and error. And that was really annoying, unless you had the specs, unless you knew the IDE cable uh, color in scheme, region, my and knew what color scheme had to go on the side of the motherboard, the motherboard side, or on the sound card IDE, which um, tech-savvy people knew the IDE color, ribbon cable color code, and I didn't. 
I just knew about it. I didn't know. I didn't know anything else. So it was really hard to figure out how to plug it in. And even if it was plugged in right, which you didn't know, how are you going to get it to work? You, know, you had to have drivers for it. And I used to. I had it memorized. I had it memorize the uh, the batch file of input command that you had to type in to make to make the computer read the CD-ROM from DOS. Yeah, from DOS. I, I, I made the CD-ROM be readable from DOS, and then we would install Windows because I didn't want to install Windows on the computer when only Windows could read the CD-ROM, but DOS couldn't. But they were both installed. Both DOS 6.1, I think it was. And then, but then Windows 98. And the reason I wanted the CD-ROM to work in DOS is because some of the games did not run in Windows; they ran in DOS. Yeah. Or I would want them to run in DOS because Windows was taking up system resources, and the games didn't have to have Windows to run. Yeah, they didn't have to have Windows. Go figure that one out. So, um, I would prefer to run games in like, I guess it was Warcraft 2, from the DOS prompt, and. I don't know if Diablo required Windows or not, but we can never get it to run. I installed it, it wouldn't really work. It, it, it suffered from about like 5 frames a second, that was horrible. Because the, I didn't have any hardware needed to play Diablo. It just was not for my dad's computer. And I think the whole point of this little you know, rant here, it's not really a rant, it's, a, it's an explanation, it's, a, it's an ex expository. The whole point of it is that my dad never upgraded his computer very well, or very often. <coughs> he had one that worked, and then he just stuck with it. <coughs> so, it was, I wasn't a PC guy because of that. I had my consoles, my Nintendo. My mother got me a Nintendo in 1990. 1990? And you call yourself yeah, a leader. Yeah, I was a latecomer to Nintendo, and I didn't get a Super Nintendo until 1994. And then from that, I got the PlayStation in 1997 Christmas. And I only enjoyed it through the summer of 98, where I graduated high school and I just went into the service. So, and then I got it sent to me at my first uh, station, so it was fine. My mom was nice enough to pay the shipping on that. Sent it to me. So, it was great because um, I got the PlayStation for Christmas 97, and it was Resident Evil 2 was the reason I really wanted the PlayStation. Because I had a friend named uh, Mike, I can't remember his last name. Um, he lived nearer to the high school than I did. And he actually, when I he found out I had a PlayStation 2, he actually rented Resident Evil 2 specifically so he could play it on his. Because he didn't have one, but he loved Resident Evil 2 because probably one of his other friends had it. And then Go he said, I will buy it for you yeah. if I could come over and play it any time. And I said, deal. And so you know what? He did buy it for me. He went to Blockbuster and they had it on sale and he bought it. Well, no, he showed the mentor. I was a latecomer to the consoles, and then a latecomer to PlayStation, and I saw the N64 for sale, yeah, and, and Kmart, and, and, they had a Kmart movie, and I didn't like it. No, I, I'm honestly not like it. I thought the system was retarded. I thought the whole concept was retarded. I thought the polygons looked ugly, and they did. For the time, they even looked ugly. They weren't appealing graphics, but everyone was jumping on the bandwagon wagon of um, 3D, because 3D did turn out to be the way of the future, but th that console, to me, should have been a prototype console. They shouldn't actually have marketed it. They should have created it for their use to experiment with 3D technology. And from that, they could have gone on to make the GameCube, which actually was one of their most underselling systems of all time, but at the same time, it was a good system. Yeah, it looked like a little fucking lunchbox. It was a little box. Uh, they eventually came out with different colors, of course. And the best part of the GameCube, for me, was the fact with the add-on that they came out with that you plugged into the bottom to play Game Boy games. Yeah. So that, that actually worked out really well. It played Game Boy Advance games. I don't think it played regular Game Boy games, no. But it did play Game Boy Advance games. Orc dog. I think a... Taiwanese or Chinese third-party add-on for that would allow it to play Game Boy games, but I'm not sure. Oh, and did you know, guys, that the um, Super Game Boy for the Super Nintendo... Oops, that's a potion of undead death. I just quaffed it, but it's not going to do anything. Well, I was taking it from the space anyway. Um, the Game Boy, the Super Game Boy for the Super Nintendo... Um, the Super Nintendo wasn't capable of playing Game Boy games. I don't mean hardware-wise and power-wise. I mean, it didn't... It literally did not have 
the necessary hardware inside of it to play Game Boy games. It was not designed to be backwards compatible with the Game Boy. The Super Game Boy actually had virtually, no, actually had all of the Game Boy components inside the Virtual Boy cartridge, minus the LCD screen and the buttons and the D-pad. So if you actually would wire up an LCD screen and the buttons and D-pad to the Super Game Boy and then like add a power source to it, that would basically it's a Game Boy. It's a Game Boy without its um, UI. Yeah. It's Stop the hardware and no UI. Which means user interface for you guys who don't know. Which I'm I'm not insulting you for not knowing. Some people just might not know. <laughs> this grinding is going pretty good actually. How many potions of the mentor do I have left? Ooh, that might have been the last one. I think I have maybe one more in my inventory. Which is good because I'm not leveling up anymore. It's, it's getting really annoying. Although I am for the O C D person in you. This map's got a lot of black to uncover. Why does it gotta be black? Because it is, look. Shut up. Alright, there we go. There we go. I think that's my last one. Nope, I still have it. I was hoping that was the last one. I didn't actually get a good view of it. Of course, you also pick them up along the way as you're fighting. So, you know. Flaming gauntlets. I can't equip them. They're not class right to me. There we go. Oh, I've got one more. Okay, one more. We can suffer through this. After we get rid of this potion, hopefully we don't pick up any more. I can uh, actually start quests around here. And there we go. Let's just, um, let's get a bunch of them around me. Here, Orkies, come here. I want to do my thing with you. I want you to feed me your health. Why are you attacking me? They do drop some decent loot over time, but of course you're just playing with the RNG at that point. Cheap Greaves, I want cheap Greaves, I want awesome Greaves. You bestial creature! Annihilating Greaves. Yes, I want everything to have the prefix annihilating, and everything to have the suffix command. Yeah. Well, wouldn't you want to wear a helmet, annihilating helmet of the commander? Or even of the chieftain. Chieftain and commander are, to me, interchangeable. I can barely see that guy even with the opaque trees. You can change the opacity of things. I think I'm at 50% right now. You can change it to be greater than that so you can see even more. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's menu opacity. But at the same time, I think it might transpose over to stuff that's in the background, or foreground. When you're behind it, I think. I've never experimented with it. I'd like to experiment with it, but I don't see any need to. Oops. My last mentor potion. Yay. Don't pick one up. Please don't pick one up. Don't drop one. Yes. Here we go. There we go. Just got an inaccurate axe. Okay. Goblin! There we go. Is he dropping gold because I hit him? Yes, he is. Sweet. There we go. Uh, there's some black over here that we can uncover. Make it green. And there's a bandit or something. A thief over here. And he dropped Redemptive Sword of the Tails. You know, that sounds kind of cool. Maybe all my prefixes should be redemptive. Yeah, why not? I'm going to pop a potion, no even to though I have the health absorbed. It doesn't quite keep up right now. I need more percentages on it. So I need more seria for whatever the prefix is on my other gear, which that means absorb health somehow. I don't know. I don't know why. I'm not going to ask why. Looks like uh, my potion's going to wear off in just a minute. And this will be my grind. Again, this is unedited. You will soon be meeting this your followers in the next world. In. Unedited. Your viewing budget. Because I said I wasn't going to edit. I do not want to spend the seven hours to edit this footage and just give you the highlights. I'm sorry. I don't want to do it. So if you're going to watch Saker with me, you're in it for the long haul. Oh, yeah. I've got no more room for this. Um, I'm full. I, I might not be full full. As in full full full. I've got a lot of health potions now, so I probably don't need to buy any more for a little while. There we go, let's put that there. Stick that there. Okay, and we'll be in black and equipo, so I'll just put it there. Um, discarded dagger of the lion. It's 40% dexterity. Fetid greaves. Mm, I'll just put that there. And I can free up some more space too by just uh, double equipping this. There you go, that's why I do dual weapons. Because I could actually put this bow up here, and I could equip 
the sword. My sword, the sword. There you go. See, I just freed up some inventory space. But I'm out of potions, so it's time to go back and sell some shit. And then from there, we'll do some quests around here and make the area of peace. Yes, because we must give peace a chance. Did he dropped something. What did he drop? Well, it looks to be like just a bunch of gold. And actually, there's I have staff. to clear up my backpack. And Venge. Ooh, uh, Venturous Bracers of Horn. I can't put any more. I only have three spots, and Bracers require four. I'll just pop this potion. I said I will just pop that potion. And put this here. There you go. Now the Bracers. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're battle mage bracers, whatever. Circle of fire plus three. I don't use circle of fire. Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Leader. Hello, Mr. Pison Man. Hello. Yes, okay, um, he'll probably drop some items that I have. Leader or not, quit. we will soon die. Right, there we, I can't even pick up. Uh, Scorching Amulet of the Angels. <laughs> yeah. I'll go back and get that in a second. I'm gonna sell some shit. And. Maybe check out the blacksmith, who knows? Again, there's a lot of quests around here. Once more, he reminds us, I do, I do indeed. I need to unlock the second shop around here it's just via a quest. Alright. 36, 128, no. Sell, sell, sell. Everyone's screaming sell, sell, because they don't want to lose all their money. But, um, ooh, that might be a better dagger than this one. It is not a better dagger. I told you, man. Them bonuses just stack, man. I'm telling you. Daggers are the shit. I don't care. I don't care. A 97 helmet? But attack speed and endurance. That only gives me endurance with no attack speed. Um, the difference may be that I could pump up some attack in it. Plus 6% to attack. Uh, but, eh, it's not really. Interesting ring, though. I'm saving that for level 21. Uh, 22, sorry. Sell that. Sell that. Sell these. I didn't want to sell this because it looked cool. The, the precise sword of high magic. Uh, but I don't really need it. It was just something cool that I was holding on to for, for awesomeness. You know? Like, yeah, check out what I found. But you can't, uh, unlike Torchlight, you can't transport items in, in the common chest between accounts. So because you can't do that, there's no point in holding on to stuff you're not going to use. Um, okay, looks like I have a lot of combat skills too, and each hit draws life from opponent. I want that. I want that on something right now. Um, I want that on something. Um, ooh, I could put it on my Greaves. Yeah. Uh... But I kind of want to put it on something that has two augment slots, so that I can continuously augment it up uh, at the same time, like like this. Um, instead of that attack and defense, I get life from opponents. So that might be cool. And but for right now, I have I have holes in this, so I could just put it on that, and I don't have anything else equipped on it, so that would work. And that's armor for you. I know you're not going to sell me any awesome daggers because I don't have any trading. And as far as rings are concerned, you don't really have good ones. You have the ones I sold you a while ago. And so, uh, plus 6% to attack on that is okay, but um, 14 to 24 in weapon lore. This one might be better than that plus 1 weapon lore. Let's find out. Um, uh, 214, 210. It's just slightly worse in damage. Yeah, I'll sell it. Sparkling Amulet of Dominion. This one gives me 46 in Devouring Amulet of Poison Resistance. But, um, how's this one work for you? More resistances. Yay. Well, that's a decent amulet to hold on to, to put on shit. That's an amulet I can never equip, because it's for dwarves, so I'll just sell it. If you put it on gear, and you're not the right class, that, that gear becomes for that class, and so there's no point. 
but not skills, not combat skills. That's a different story. That's why they did that. All right, let's put some points into skills, shall we? Um, what can I get? Sword lore, parry and riding, armor, ranged combat, meditation. I would do sword lore for attack, but and for speed, I think. Yeah, and speed. Uh, constitutions for health. Parrying's good. Parrying can disarm as well. There's a disarming skill, but parrying can also do it. Riding and armor. Armor would be nice. And um, ranged combat, don't care about. Uh, long handle weapons, don't care about. Uh, riding, don't care about. Armor seems to be a pretty good one because it just ups the defensive value of all your armor and decreases the handicap if you're not the right level. So, like, one point in armor is not bad to have. Matter of fact, four points in armor is pretty decent to have. Just so you know, about four points, and but anyway, um, the magic, the dual wielding, ah, I can I'm now twenty twenty, because I'm level twenty, and uh, weapon lore or concentration, mm, yeah, plus seven, plus sixty four percent to, you know, regenerating my special move, so, and this helmet, I'm really really tempted on this helmet. Because its base defense is so much better. I don't get that plus three attack speed or that plus four endurance. But the uh, plus four endurance stays. But the attack speed I don't get. But I could give myself attack on it for attack and defense probably. Um, maybe it gives me resistance. I guess. So 